Hello you little bastards. You've made it just in time for the vocal minority with Nick and Steve. A la Brewski. If it's your first time tuning into the podcast, welcome to the show. You'll soon realize that Nick is very decent and just about as sweet as cherry pie. He's one of few that has never done anything wrong. There's a big part of me that likes to help elderly people across the street. Only I take them about halfway. <laughs> okay, and then I just leave them there. I find I'm still doing more than the average person, so it is what it is. Steve is a guy that's exceptional. Exceptionally horny. You definitely wouldn't want to have him around your mom if she's hot. But you will want him at every party. Who brings their mom to a party anyway? He's about as loyal as one person can be, and he loves his female fans. Oh, I do. I got a fan under the desk. I got a big one over here off to the side blowing me off the camera. Like, Steve Harness! How do I even begin to tell you about Brewski? His mind is a vault of semi-useless information. Useless until you need it. It's at that very moment that his oddly overgrown brain will seduce you like Fabio in low-calorie butter. It's time for another Brewski. This one is a crazy Brewski. You're right, dude. We get it. Someone get me some Cheetos. Can we please move on, dude? You're right, okay? Let's get the podcast going, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. Hey, welcome to the program. Does that uh, seem very hot to you? You seem very hot to me always. So. Oh, no. <laughs> I appreciate that. It wasn't uh, overmodulated or anything, Nick, so I think you're okay. All right. Well, welcome to the program, the Vocal Minority <laughs> with Nick and Steve, Paula Brisky. We do it in real time, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, if right. we sound like idiots, it's not because we edited this bad boy. <laughs> right. Well, do it live. Thank you, Bill O'Reilly. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? That was, uh, uh, oh, when was that? What show? Uh, Inside Edition. Inside Edition. That's right. Yes. That's a great <laughs> famous outtake. Uh, look that one up on YouTube. Bill O'Reilly <laughs> screaming at his producer or whatever. I'll write it and I'll do it live. Yeah. So. I prefer to berate you guys uh, during the show, not during some outtake, you know, Phil O'Reilly. I want to be able to get creative with it. You know, I need to take some time. Uh, Casey Kasem has a great one out, too. Do you remember the dog that died? I mean, he's doing a request. Snuggles. Snuggles, the dog is dead. (laughs) Yes. Someone someone gets on on the phone. Where are the pictures I was supposed to see? I want to talk to Don. There's a Barry White one that's really good, too. Where he's doing a PSA. Yeah. These guys, these mother effers, they're throwing putting in words they don't even effing need. It's awesome. It really is. I thought he was nothing but smooth and nice. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Uh, I do want to do a, a quick call out, shout out, put you on blast. Uh, the show open there mentions, you know, if, if it's your first time listening, welcome to the show. Yeah. Um, where, the, where the hell have you been, by the way? We're approaching episode number 100. So if it's your first time listening, thanks for finally getting here. Is uh, this episode 100? No, uh, we're 95-ish. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to hit 100 by the end of the year or not. We shall see. We yeah. do have a new listener. I don't know if they've shown up yet on the map, but uh, this past week I had one of my cousins here at the house, and it's odd to say my cousin because I'm so much older than he is. He's not even 19 years old. He's going to college up at Plymouth State University, and I played him some of the show, and uh, he dug it. Spread yeah. the word with the college kids, like STD at a frat party. Like, let's <laughs> get this thing spread around. But yeah. Yeah. part of my point is uh, admonishing some of you who haven't found us yet. Somebody who lives on the southern tip of South America started Ooh. listening to us this past week. Like uh, that's, You could hit Antarctica from there, okay? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's as far south as you can go. Did Without they download or? or? They're doing podcasts, not socials. Okay. Yeah, for the audience, like when you listen to the podcast, we can see you on our map. The socials, no, but uh, yeah. So yeah, someone, yeah, the southern tip of South America. I'm a little behind on posting some new clips, but we'll get there. Uh, you'll have to forgive us. Uh, Two thirds of the show has COVID basically right now. <laughs> right, so right now. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're a little Both behind. Both you too? Yes. <laughs> Steve got it first. And uh, while I was in Mexico, Steve had COVID. And uh, he cu- he's like, I-, I just need to let you know that I do have COVID or whatever. And uh, I got home a day later. I said, Steve, I feel like I'm coming down with something. I hope it's not <laughs> COVID. And the next morning, yeah, it was COVID. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. I don't want to tell you not to travel because, you know, go live your life, enjoy. But this is now the last two times you've traveled, you've come home with COVID. Truth. From Hawaii, I came home, I got COVID. 
Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, this trip is the exact same way. Uh, <laughs> I sh- I should be doing something different, right? I don't know. I mean, in all seriousness, maybe you should be wearing like an N95 mask when you're on the airplanes and stuff, like the high grade, you know, ones. But I did that for a long time, and I stopped. And you know what? I didn't get COVID on those airplanes when I was wearing it. So I <laughs> and it's should hard probably- to say. Is it an airplane? Is it the airport? Is it the resort? Was it the buffet? Like, who knows when you're traveling? Like, literally. I recently was in uh, Coney Island, New York, a couple of weeks ago, and I had to ride the subway from Midtown Manhattan all the way down to Coney Island, which is about a 50, 52 minute ride on, wow. the, on a crowded subway. I thought for sure I was going to catch something while I was there. Yeah, but, AIDS I mean, it's or New York City, you know? I mean, <laughs> Dude, well, I never knew you could ride a subway for near an hour. That's like riding a train. Yeah, you, you absolutely. Do people do that often? Uh, yeah, yeah. I know a woman actually who lives in Coney Island who works in Midtown, um, and I don't think she drives. Uh, she might take a car service every so often, but even but even that's going to still take you almost a half hour, and that's if there's like light traffic. Uh, life is different on the East Coast, right, Stephen? As far as I know, I've been to Boston once. So that's about it. <laughs> I mean, but when you understand what's happening, like in New York and Boston and the different ways that they live where like in New York, there is a section of town that, you know, downtown, a lot of people don't own cars. Can you imagine not owning a car? Yeah, no, that's a whole different lifestyle out there. And uh, yeah, I, I want to experience more of it. I have not. I did see a funny map the other day that had California overlaid over the East Coast. Do, do you realize we take up like the entire East Coast, the state of California? <laughs> Basically, what do you mean from Maine from like to, Florida? Yeah, if you lined up the northern end of California with the northern end of Maine, we go all the way down to like North Carolina. Like it covers the entire New England. <laughs> you well, could all of New England in California. When I was a kid, there were some families that would go to Disneyland and they would drive to Disneyland. Oh, from the East Coast? Wow. No, the Dis- Disney World in Florida. Oh, Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Disney World in Florida. And if you drive straight through, it takes about 24 hours. It used to take me about... 19 and a half hours to drive from Seattle to San Dimas. I need to get out there, Brewski, so uh, prepare your tour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Well, wear an N95 mask when you do it, dude. Yeah, apparently. And, uh, yeah, my son has COVID right now. I mean, it, right. it's, it's really going everywhere. This is only my second time. The first time was like in 2021 or something. I mean, it was a while ago. And uh, I almost ended up in the hospital. I, uh, yeah. I, went, I went to the urgent care here. It was so weird. I woke up that morning fine. By 11 a.m., I was shivering cold. By 2 p.m., my skin was burning hot. So I went to the urgent care here. When I got there, my fever was 102. By the Jeez. time my COVID results came back, like 20 minutes later, it was 103. And they yeah. said, if you hit 104, we're sending you to the hospital. So we got to get you under control. And they shot me full of something. I, don't, I mean, it was a big syringe, not a big semen. Needle. It was it maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. They were uh, they were playing Barry White uh, when they did. So who <laughs> yes, knows? dude. But yeah, now they got the fever under control and all that, and then they put me on this you know brand new COVID pills that uh, I believe Nick is on as well. That are they're great. I take them if they offer them. COVID, Plaxovid, Plaxovid. <laughs> right. It's COVID. I've been calling them Plexi COVID or something, but yeah, it's that's that's correct. So. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, second time I've taken the pills. I've had COVID exactly twice, and it's <laughs> yeah, all you know, in like the last three months. Yeah, yeah dude, that isn't that something that I was. I thought I was last man standing right. when I didn't have COVID. I was like, I cannot believe it. I don't know anyone else who made it as long as you. Now, I know, Brewski, you haven't had a confirmed case, but we're pretty sure you did have it early on, right? Uh, yeah, when we first started seeing the first cases, I got really sick when I was in Vegas. I ended up spending two days on a futon at my friend's apartment in Vegas in the studio where her uh, husband records the podcast he works on. Just feeling like death. Oh, yeah. It's going around again. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit, I think responsibly so, BT dubs, about on this program uh, about the way that they were talking about this new vaccine, right? Yes. Is that they sort told of me un- not to get it. And and somewhat unpopular when anyone says, like, don't get the vaccine, but there's science behind it. And they were, you know, saying, like, you can get it if you want. You don't need it more than likely if you're in this certain population. Right. But This was a doctor who was on the CDC COVID advisory board. And yeah. he said for the new one, if you're not old or immunocompromised, like, don't get it. 
And so I was like, all right, screw it. I'm lucky to get it. <laughs> and now I got it. So, yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's so many different mutations. It's like, well, does, does, does this new vaccine, does it protect you against these new mutations? This new vaccine is supposed to cover everything combined. Yeah. So you're still testing positive, I would assume, right now. So how are you doing <laughs> as we're sitting here recording this fun show? Uh, I feel, I mean, I feel my best the, today. Yeah. You know, uh, I was, God, dude, it hit me the exact same way. It hit me the first time I'm sitting there watching TV and all of a sudden my body starts getting very cold and very achy an yeah. hour later, dude, I'm full on sick. Yeah. It really creeps in quickly. <clears throat> it's funny. Yeah. My, uh, my, my favorite part of that whole story was after I left the doctor, um, I didn't have my kids that week. I'm single. Like I, I don't have anyone to, you know, help me out around here. So I had to go to the pharmacy to get my pills, even though I had 103 fever and was raging with COVID. So right. I, I put on a mask, uh, and you know, I sanitized my hands, walk it in the pharmacy and I tried to stay away from everyone, but the freaking pharmacist, I get up to the counter and they're like, oh, it's not filled yet. Give us five minutes. It'll be filled. And the guy looks at what the prescription is and looks at me. And he's like, we'll, we'll be quick. We'll be quick. Because you don't get the prescription, obviously, unless you have COVID. So yeah. I'm also standing in your lobby. Right. Yeah. I stood there for an hour yeah. just sweating through my clothes. I was over so my 103 degree fever and just like, and about 45 minutes in, I pulled the guy aside. I'm like, listen. I have COVID. I have a 103 degree fever. I'm sweating through my clothes. If you can't get me this soon, just tell me that so I can go home already. Right. No, no, no. Give five more minutes. Five more minutes. <laughs> An hour I stood there just sweating. Well, and then Looking at of, everyone in my town like, yeah, stay away from me. <laughs> even if they don't have your prescription ready, they should look at it and know what, see what, what it's for. And right. then prioritize that to get that done immediately <laughs> yes. to get right. you the hell out of there. Yes. If no one else is standing here sweating, infected, uh, you know, get to mine now, please. Yeah. Oh, so annoying. So yeah. annoying, dude. Well, so you he did finally get it to you. He got on the meds and uh, yeah, I don't know. You were in hell for the first couple of days anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was definitely worse. Uh, the first day or two, yeah, just body aches and uh, shivers and all that. And then it got into my throat. That was the worst part. I lost my voice for a day or so. And, um, you know, right. it, it's all it's it's run the course now. So well, all good. good. Everyone's but healthy. I do recommend either getting vaccinated or if your doctor offers you the Plexicovid thing, take them. They're they're great. So, yeah. Or just you got to thank the Lord above, dude, when something like this <laughs> happens, like get on your knees sure. yes. and, and thank the Lord. Yes. Amen. Where, well, who started this, though? I mean, <laughs> was that the devil? The devil started COVID. God created Plexicovid. Is that what oh, we're saying? OK. OK. Is everyone uh, ready for news? Yes. Yeah. Oh. This is Need to Know News. News you need to know. Hello, Americans. This is Paul Harvey. Stand by for news. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of men sweating, let's start off the news talking about the epidemic of men that have been sweating a lot of late. And gentlemen, if you have not been sued for sexual assault or harassment, you've you made it. You made it through the window. Hallelujah for you. What do you unlike mean? Bill Cosby, unlike P. Diddy, unlike Axl Rose. So I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but New York State uh, passed a law a little while ago. Uh, the name, uh, it's called the New York Adult Survivors Act. Uh -huh. This was a new thing. It allows adults who survived a sexual abuse in the state yeah. uh, a one-year, like, no prohibition. Like, you know, the statute of limitations would have expired at some point, seven years ago, nine years ago, whatever it was. New York State basically said, all right, for the next several months, like there is no statute of limitations. We're going to give you until last Friday to file any sexual assault lawsuit you want to from any time in history. Doesn't even matter if it was the 80s, 90s, whatever. What? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how so, long does it last? One year? Yeah, I don't know what the window was. It was a few months when they started it, but the window did officially close a few days ago. But this is why you may have noticed, like P. Diddy got sued for sexual assault. Axl Rose did. Bill Cosby has a new lawsuit against him. Like a whole bunch of famous dudes, especially last week, right before the window was about to close, all got sued for sexual harassment. I oh, saw people popping up and had no idea why. I just thought it was busy season, you know? That is why. New York governor... Uh, uh, Kathy this. Yeah. And yeah, as a result, a flurry of new accusations have been made public as people were rushing for the deadline. 
Uh, let's see. Already, the law has been used uh, against people like Russell Brand, Marilyn Manson, uh, Harvey Weinstein. But in recent days, we saw Sean P. Diddy Combs getting sued. He he settled one, and then he has another one. Yes, that- he settled one. Another one popped up. Uh, another new Bill Cosby uh, person came out. Jeez, Actor Jamie Foxx is bam, getting bam. sued. Axel Rose being sued. Uh, <laughs> some L.A. music producer getting sued. L.A. Reed. So, yeah, this is a draining of the sexual perversion swamp. You know, this is a little round them up, boys. So the good news is if you did survive it, now you can proudly declare like, hey, I'm uh, I'm not some pervy sexual assaulting creep. No one sued me. Yeah. A whole new window was opened and no one sued me. So So now that they closed the window. Is it off the everything's off the table if it was more than, you know, whatever statute is? yeah. Yeah. Yep. Get it while you can, kids. Exactly. This was a uh, one-time, <laughs> sue them while you can sort of window. How often can they do it? I mean, I guess if they pass another law and do another window, they could extend this again, or other states could do it, by the way. This was New York. So some people took advantage of it. But what about California? Wow. Like another huge state. So Yeah, we, dude. So we'll see. But yeah, there's probably some pervs running around going, yeah, I assaulted that woman 10 years ago. I'm clear. <laughs> I'm free. And then, oops. You get some sort yeah. of 10-year chip. Now, I'll tell you, I have wondered why there are not more, at least allegations, against every 1980s rock band there is. I mean, (laughs) the groupie scene back then and what those guys were doing to to the female fans. I mean, obviously it was exploitive. Obviously they had power over these women. And I I have a great Metallica documentary that came out in, I don't know, early 90s. And one of the roadies is talking about what they would do to women to get them backstage passes. Oh, yeah. And one of the things was I would make women, I would give them one of Lars' Uh, drumsticks, and I would would tell them if the logo disappears, I'll give you a backstage pass. Now, for those of you that don't know, the logo is on the handle of a drumstick, not the tip at the point. It, it's on the right. So yes. he wanted the word Zildjian to disappear inside of a woman in order to give her a backstage pass to then go meet Lars. We're talking 12. That's 12 inches, dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that Motley Crue, I mean, have you read any of their biographies? Yeah. I mean, there's craziness. I can't believe there's more. There hasn't been more accusations, but someone caught up to Axl Rose. The uh, It sounds terrible, too. The woman accuses him of uh, dragging her across the floor. Punching her and violently penetrating her, whatever that means, doesn't sound yeah. fun. So that doesn't sound like fun in games, Axel. No. <laughs> so, but yeah, so there you go. So, gentlemen, as long as none of you have been sued, you're all good people and you all survive. <laughs> so. I think you already know the answer to that, dude. Why are you making it sound like we could be sexual rapists? Hey, who knows? <laughs> I'm just. Uh, I make no assumptions. I'm saying oh. no, you are now clear. You you've made it through the window. So <laughs> okay. This is Need to Know News. News you need to know. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. You're so good. You didn't rape and assault anyone. Nice job, guys. (laughs) Nice job. (laughs) Daddy's boy. All right. Listen, did Dana White come out and actually say to this world, I love Bud Light. I love Bud Light. I love what they stand for. I love who they are. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I've signed them on as the new sponsor for the UFC. Wait, okay, I was going to say, who's Dana White? He's the UFC guy, right? Dana yes. White, yes. Okay. He signed uh, with Bud Light for UFC, huh? So, yes, signed with Bud Light. I, I mean, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, Medello was the uh, old sponsor that went it out. It was, and, yep, yep. Owned uh, by the same company. But yeah. Exactly. Right. Same. Yeah. But... Now he doesn't even uh, just uh, talk about Anheuser Busch is okay. He talks about the fact that Bud Light is okay, and a lot of people are saying you did it for the money, you moron. Who cares? He's doing the right thing. I would take a deal that's profitable and makes you look like a decent human being to the rest of the world. You have to think that the, he's friends with Trump. He's yeah. friends with all these uh, Kid Rock. Okay, so and more conservatives go. are probably uh, not dramatically, but I would say that's more of a conservative leaning crowd. The UFC fighting. Oh yes. sure, is yeah, that a fair yeah, statement? Yeah. No. Yes, for yes. sure. Uh, this is what he had to say about people saying, like, you just did it for the money. Comes to Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light. Everybody talks about, oh, you did it for money. Hey, dummies, all sponsorship deals are about money. Yeah. So when you talk about being a sellout, 
I had multiple deals in front of me. So it's not like Bud Light showed up and they were the only option I had to get money. Everybody on every side of this deal absolutely positively know that this was not about money for me. For Anheuser-Busch, it was about values, core values for me. I'm at a point in my life and I'm at a point in my career where nothing is just about money anymore. The things that I said about Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light yesterday are absolutely true. I am a big military law enforcement guy. They have this folds of honor. They've spent $44 million over the last however many years fallen first responders and military people, their families get taken care of with this money, scholarships for their kids, et cetera. That is right up my alley. Almost a uh, billion dollars a year go to U.S. farmers. That is right up my alley. That's exactly who I am. See, and See. now he's saying to all the conservatives, like uh, I- idiots, like you're going to let this can bother you? Like all these influencers got a can. You're going to let this can bother you when Anheuser-Busch Bud Light has done all of that stuff for a long ass time and continue to do it. Like these are all the people they're fighting for that you think we should fight for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen, I- I'm going to mainly agree with everything you just said there. Um, you know, kudos to him. I know he's going to get flack for this. Uh, so that's all cool. And h- what he started off saying there is, of course, correct. You're you're running a business. We have sponsorship deals. Of course, there's money attached to it. Like, yeah, be an immature child. We're trying to make money here. It's it's the world of business. So I get that. The only part I would mildly push back on is when he was like, I don't do things for money, but I'm going to take Bud Light's money. You could have just had them sponsor for free or, you know, charge them. <laughs> <laughs> next to nothing, but I'm sure you did not. So let's not step on your good message there. Of course, they're paying you, and of course, that's fine. Just leave it there, okay? <laughs> yes, dude. You got to get some money for it, for crying yeah. out loud. Otherwise, just uh, let them endorse for free and be charitable, but you're not going to do that. So I thought it was interesting that uh, Dana White is President Trump's friend, okay? Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, I guess they're friends, all right? Kid Rock, a friend. Uh, Tucker Carlson hanging with them now. Like, this is a little gang of a uh, kind of moronic people hanging with President Trump. Walmart. And they, uh, former, thank you, Brewski. Uh, and they just went to the fight all together this past week. Oh, that's right. Is that where Bill Burr's wife flipped off Trump? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. And kudos to them, by the way. Yeah. Yes. What a class move, dude. I loved it. And it was a double flip off, too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Double fingered. Well, and then did, did you see that uh, Bill uh, actually addressed that whole thing? And yeah. Bill, yeah, Bill's proud to. of his wife. Bill, Bill's, Bill's not the guy that, that's going to back down at all. No. Uh, anything. He, he stood up for his wife and he said something that I thought was hilarious about, like, I was just going to a fight. I didn't realize a GOP convention was going to break out around me. <laughs> like, you know, geez. Totally. So anyway, they did go to the fight, right? And they all walk in together, you know, walking, you know, through the aisles and everything. And apparently they talk about how much, uh, uh, the crowd erupts for not only former President Trump, but for, you know, this click walking in. Yeah. Kid Rock was there, and then Hannity had Kid Rock on. All right? Yes. Now, Kid Rock, did you hear him talking to him? Did you hear any of the interview? I- I've got some clips pulled up here. I don't know if we're on the same story or not, but um, so proceed. All right. So Hannity starts interviewing Kid Rock. I'm actually going to... uh and Kid Rock was, of course, really the one that started this Dylan Mulvaney stuff with him out shooting up a case of Bud Light and telling yeah. them to go F themselves and all yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're doing an interview. I'm going to play this, and I'm able to pause this. This is a uh, all in all. It's almost a three-minute interview, so uh, we'll stop and talk, yeah? Yep. Well, I'm a huge fan of Dana White. I saw you with President Trump and Dana and, and Tucker, and you guys all went to the MMA, where was it, the Garden? I UFC, think, right? yeah. The UFC. Garden. All right, so he was on this show. I saw. And it was about Bud Light. So he took, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> he, took, he took. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Who's bringing this up? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. Why am I yeah. attached to this now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Now, I'll tell you why. I've never in my whole life ever supported a boycott. I've never called for a firing or a cancellation ever. I mean, even people that I can't stand, like Bill. By the way, I didn't either. Dude. 
Okay, first of all, Hannity, go bite me. You've called for multiple politicians to be uh, fired, boycotted, voted out, et cetera, et cetera. And they've railed on Major League Baseball for coming out for being supportive of pro, you know, gay rights and whatnot. So he's but, caused the boycott of several things. Yes. And both of you idiots, don't, t- t- oh, I didn't specifically say, to go, I just told them all to go F themselves. And blah, like, your words have power because you have fans, you morons. That's what they don't understand. But it's hysterical that Chris Rock could even, or, uh, uh, Kid even Rock. say, Kid, Kid Rock, Rock could even say that. By the way, I didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. The, what I worried about in that case was the guys that have the, the beer working routes. class people. Right. The guys <laughs> working class, you know, my people from Detroit. Right. right. The guys that work in the factory, the guys yeah. that load yeah. the trucks, they're not the guys that made that stupid, you know. Oh, they had no dog in this fight at all. It's right. actually funny. Speaking of that UFC fight, I'm standing there with our favorite president. Right. And <laughs> someone comes over to like the CEO of Anheuser Busch standing right behind you. Right. So I go to the POTUS. I'm like, hey, that's the CEO of Anheuser Busch. Trump's like, you want to go talk to him? I'm like, I do. <laughs> so me and him go over. We actually had a great conversation. Dude, this is, I mean, this is awful. You know, this is so scripted, written out, you know, everything. You asked for everybody to screw with Bud Light through your actions, through your words, both. You t- tried to take it out of your bars. I won't be serving that. Right. Even though you know, he didn't. And he's had multiple opportunities to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not what I meant, everyone. Take it totally. easy on Dylan Mulvaney and all transgender people. What, and when uh, Dylan Mulvaney was being, you know, attacked and, uh, you know, people were threatening her life, like you didn't step up then. You didn't say anything then. No, nor did you when people were threatening our lives for supporting the whole Bud Light thing. So. That's true, dude. Because, you know, if you put this in context, why, does, why did this start? It's like, you know, I told him that night, I go, you signaled to a lot of people like myself, like-minded people. Put the trans thing aside for a minute, right? I was like, but by sending that can to the trans kid, you kind of signaled to us, <clears throat> you support this lifestyle. And more importantly, like men being in women's sports in my granddaughter's locker room. What the hell are you talking okay. about, dude? First of all, That's- this isn't a kid that it was sent to. Uh, Dylan is 20-something. Yeah. Well, over the drinking age. She was like 26 or whatever at the time. So stop with this kid stuff. And it's not a lifestyle. It's them being who they are. Right. The and fact- not all transgender people are athletes, and not all of them are uh, stalking children in locker rooms. A-hole. Dude, it, and, that, and those are the assumptions that are so ignorant and dangerous, and it's, uh, you know... We keep talking about the fact that, you know, uh, 20 years ago, this was how all gay people were definitely treated. But yes, still today, there's a large portion of this population assumes if someone's gay, they're probably also a pedophile yes. for some reason. Right. I mean, I, I, totally. That was the theme in our comment section on this Kid Rock video, that everyone just has some weird assumption that if you're gay or transgendered, you're a pedophile. And I, there's there is no connection to that. No, so dangerous, dude. They're so dangerous for you to think that and spout that and tell other people that. Right. And you know, there's awesome. a hashtag that that goes around that's been going on for a while. Hashtag not a drag queen. Hashtag not gay. And they'll they'll put that when the, when there's a news story about yet another pastor or youth pastor that's been arrested or convicted of grooming and child molestation right you know? yes yes do we assume all priests are child molesters i know i make no. jokes to that extent but in reality obviously it's a percentage it's just like i'm sure there's some transgender that are also you know pedophiles or rapists but it's like you, you say that about plumbers i mean come on yeah. all of the uh idiots that are doing this are i think that whether you're gay trans or whatever it's a proclivity Right. I, right. I mean, it's it's not something that's natural. So you're looking at it very oddly and you're getting people killed, you know, like innocent people. So, yeah. Right. Talk about it. Most of us draw a hard line right there. Nah, no, no, no. What? About, like, what do you, you have doing? a granddaughter? You, what, you're like 40, two grandkids. You're like 42 yeah. years old. Well, go it ahead. Get, it gets cold in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> so I said, you signaled that to us. I said, but speaking of, I was like, I was like, you know, if someone wants to be trans, I was like, I didn't rip that kid. I said, F you guys. I said, I didn't even say boycott or cancer. I said, F you. I said, what are you doing? Injecting yourself into this conversation, these polarizing social issues. I was like, you know, you could be doing so much more positive stuff, just making us laugh and drink beer. But 
You simple-minded person. Redirect I mean, the fall of the frogs, bud. <laughs> I just yeah. want the frog. Make us laugh. Let Let us laugh. How dare you uh, have someone's back? Right. Well, and by the way, I'm going to connect correct Hannity. He's 52. Oh sure, I, I'm surprised he's that young. Actually, <laughs> so. Kid Rock is. Yeah, he's born in. He was born in January of '71. Yeah. And uh, so he's 52. And that that's not unusual for someone to have grandkids at 52. No, he's your twinsy, Brewski. He's your, actually, he's your age twinsy. Actually, right. I'm eight days older than him. I'm born on the ah. ninth. He's <laughs> born on no nine days old. He was born on the 18th of January. That's why you're so much more mature than he is. Right, yeah. <laughs> Rock just needs eight more days to catch up, and then he'll be like, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm enlightened now. Yeah. No reason to listen to uh, the rest of it, because it just goes on with all the same yeah. crap over and over. Well, and, but hold uh, on. He basically says, though, in there that he's pro-transgender. If if that's your choice, I mean, I've got uh, to... Okay, you got to hear that more of it then. Well, hold on. I got a quote here. Um... Someone wants to dress up like a girl. They want to be transgender or whatever. A lot of people fought and died for them to do that, so go for it. We can coexist in public places. Yes. That sounds pretty pro-transgender to me all of a sudden. Uh, there's uh, you got to listen to before it because it comes off flippant, you know. <laughs> oh, it, it, sarcastic. <laughs> no, I mean it, it. It does come off just being like you know, uh, you know. I don't care if you're gay, straight, or this. You know, I don't care if you're black, purple, or yellow. Oh, is I this the whole everybody. like? I've got black friends. I'm not racist. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, yes. I don't care if some kid's oh. blowing some kid. They're fine. <laughs> right, I'm fine with it. Just keep it where I can't see it. Right. Well, according to his literal words, he's pro-transgender, which, uh, again, adds his overall, not only hypocrisy in life in general, but his short-sightedness of what he has unraveled and caused. And he clearly has gotten enough blowback that he's trying to separate himself from it because I don't buy for a second that he's changed. Come on, he's no. the uh, he's the guy who said I I can't be canceled. I can't be canceled. There's nothing to cancel. Although he did used to be a hip hop artist, then he was a rocker, and now he's a country artist. So again, he's transitioned musically many times. So yes, he's also a rich kid from the suburbs of Detroit who's never actually had to work for anything. Yes, and he tries to make himself seem like he's all blue collar and working class, yeah, working yeah. man, factory man. And some reason the uh, conservatives just uh, look right through uh, any of the glaring exceptions or admissions to that, and just accept them because they want to. We hate you, Kid Rock. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this. We interrupt our program to bring you a special. Here is program. a news bulletin. We interrupt this program to bring you the humanity and all the faith. The state which will live in infamy. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Need to know news. News you need to know. It's time for another brewski. This one is a crazy brewski. Okay. Do we want to hear about Trump? Yes. Brewski okay. was teasing us before the show about some crazy articles. So, yes. So, this comes from the Washington Post. So, recently, the, you know, there's obviously the, the whole trial with Jack Smith in Washington, D.C., and Trump yeah. subverting the election and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. And, and by the way, as a new savvy person like I am and you guys are, I'm losing track of all of his lawsuits. I can't imagine what the average citizen, I can see why they're just not even paying attention to it. I but. love you, Jack. Just keep steady, Jack. It's just funny. If we had one lawsuit, we could all follow it meticulously, but there's so many. It's just become so easy to lose track of it. It's way too many. Right. It's a brilliant strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get indicted once. Get indicted 97 times. No one will be able to follow <laughs> I did it all for you. Right. And and we, we all know about what Trump said about the Russia investigation, right? Hoax. Russia, Russia, Russia. Fake news. Fake news. It's a hoax. Yeah. So in a new filing with uh, Judge Tanya Chutkin, they're asking for the entire file on the uh, Russia investigation, including all the classified material, because they want to use that as part of their defense. Yes. Yeah. Which, by and, the way, I believe he had access to all of that for four years. Well, so, He but, didn't take that in his footlocker, apparently. Well, but, but here's the thing, though. He's trying to say in this filing that he couldn't have subverted the 2020 election because the 2016 election was already subverted by Russia. So he's admitting they helped him win? Yes, exactly. He's saying, huh. he's saying, I interesting did. defense. Yes. Okay, say it one more time, Bruce. You say it for the people in the back, including me. Okay. He's saying that, that the charges about him subverting the election 
in 2020 need to be dropped because you can't subvert something that there was already doubt about to begin with. And the, the doubt in American elections goes back to 2016 when Russia subverted our election. Someone tampered before me, therefore whatever I did doesn't matter. Exactly. I mean, does he really know that Russia subverted the election or is he just conveniently, you know, jumping on that bandwagon to, to oh, no. I mean, again, the, confuse everything? He's known from the get-go what they did. That Russia. He knows what they did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, but, but of course, deny, deny, deny. You never give in at all. That's, that's his motto. Right. That's great. It's kind of like when he went on Meet the Press recently and said, I, all I needed was a few hundred more votes to win. And Kirsten right. Walker was like, so doesn't that mean you're admitting you lost? He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> People say that his cognitive skills are failing. And there was a story that came out today and it said he's faking all of this. OK, <laughs> that's what he's claiming is that he's faking all this. When I keep referring to Biden as Obama, I'm doing that on purpose because Obama's obviously running the show. Uh, there is no cognitive decline in Donald Trump. From what I understand, it's all fake, Steve. He said he passed his cognitive test with flying colors. <laughs> yeah. As if that's how they critique those kind of things. But yeah. Uh, I mean man, person, camera, TV, just memorized it from the <laughs> last time, right? That was great. Yeah, they gave me a list of things to memorize and he just looks around the room. <laughs> man. man woman, camera, <laughs> lying president. Oh, that's me. Sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> oh so, my gosh. Here is a direct quote, by the way, from the Washington Post article. In a court filing this week, his attorneys tried a novel argument. It wasn't really Trump's fault that people thought the election might have been subverted. They asserted it was instead at least part in part a function of the 2016 Russian interference of the election. Well, it's great defense. And when you lie so, you know, frequently, it's probably hard to keep all these things straight. Yeah. It's hard to realize one admissions uh, short circuiting another lie or another admission. I mean, I feel bad for the guy, really. <laughs> oh, you know what, yeah. dude? I mean, he lies so much that it's, I, it's hard for me to keep up with what was true and what was a lie. Like, I have to go through the Rolodex. Most of the time you can assume it was a lie, but sometimes you got to think, was that real? Yeah. No, well, that's I, tricky. You know what I'd like to know is how is he not just walking around with no pants on at all times? Yeah, he's come pretty close. Nick brought up the story a couple of weeks ago about him showing up with his pants on backwards. Nick sent me the video and his pants are on backwards. Like there's zero doubt. Oh, I was I was talking about, you know, liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, yes. Well, that too, I suppose. <laughs> his pants are on backwards, so they're going to burn differently. But yeah, he clearly walked on stage with his pants on backwards. I mean, it was obvious. And a big diaper puffing him out. That was yes, so weird. They were puffy. The knees were all wrinkled on the front because normally he wore them correctly. So they're wrinkled on the back where your knees would bend. And, and yeah. there was no zipper. There was no pockets. Like his pants were on backwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I found uh, Donald Trump's new hype man, dude. Do you remember this guy? If any one of you doesn't respect me, you'd have a big dump in your pants. Do you remember that guy? <laughs> oh, who is that? <laughs> that is that uh, guy who fought. Tyson years and years ago. Are you talking about Peter McNeely? Yes, that's Peter McNeely. And at his press conference, that's what he said. If any one of you doesn't respect me, you'd have a big dump in your pants. <laughs> so oh. that must be Trump's new hype man, dude. That would you would you like just and I'll keep it as brief as possible, <laughs> would you like to hear about my encounter uh, on a Cambridge, Massachusetts street at two in the morning with Peter oh, McNeely? Boy. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Crying out loud. This was almost 20 years ago. And I was doing overnights at a radio station in Cambridge. And I put on a long record. I went out to get a slice of pizza at this all night pizza place. And this is a spot that it stayed open to like three or four. So this is like the place where everyone who missed the restaurants that stayed open late, they go yeah. in to get like a, a slice. After they've been yeah. drinking all night. And everyone's sober, I'm sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's these kids that are outside this place. And there's a really big guy standing right near them. And I hear them saying, that's him. That's him. No, no, that can't be him. Yes, I'm telling you, it's him. It's him. So then finally, they go to one of their friends to go over and, and ask him if he is Peter McNeely. And he says, you're Peter McNeely, aren't you? And he's like, yeah. And he says, you fought Mike Tyson? He's like, yeah. He's like, right can now, I ask you a question? And then he just took this big, deep breath. What's it feel like to get punched by Mike Tyson? 
Peter McNeil looked at him and said, it hurts, and walked away. And I'm standing there eating a slice of pizza and just witnessing this entire this entire encounter. That's funny. Did it you be- say anything? I couldn't believe what was happening. You know, get your popcorn. And- That's a surreal moment in Boston there, eating pizza at 2 a.m. and having the, uh, the pro fighter there. And I would never ask somebody that question, by the way, because the, to me, the obvious response is the guy punches you in the face and be like, it hurts more than that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Apparently, yeah, it's well, dangerous, dude. Right. I will say, here's one last note about Peter McNeely. After that whole Tyson thing, he got heavily into drugs and went to rehab. And his best friend in rehab and who he got very close with yeah. was the great Chris Farley. Oh, interesting. He really? and Farley were both buddies in rehab. Yep, they were both into coke. Yeah, and maybe big dumps in their pants, dude. <laughs> That's very Freudian. That's a weird thing to throw out. <laughs> so you weird. disagree with me, you must have a dump in your pants. I don't have a dump in my pants. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> hey, keep laughing. Keep laughing. It's real funny, huh? Yeah. If any one of you doesn't respect me, you'd have a big dump in your pants. <laughs> And he had, his, you know, he was pointing at the crowd like you got a big dump in your pants. His dad was in the crowd. I was just like, who, dude, you're not playing well, with the whole IQ. Well, you, you obviously he he was a club fighter from around. Here. He took a lot of shots for a lot of years because he said he was going to, quote, wrap Mike Tyson in a cocoon of horror. <laughs> yes, <laughs> dude, dude, yes. The yeah. whole press conference is really funny. You should YouTube it sometime. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess that's the best comeback you have when you've been kicked in the head <laughs> and punched in the face for your entire professional career. I'm waiting for Trump to say it, dude. Well, he hasn't used that one yet. Yeah. Well, it's coming. So. All right. Listen. I'm listening. Do you ever wonder, uh, there's people who really trust DT, and then there's other people that trust him with their life. Do you believe that? And by DTs, are we talking detoxing uh, side effects? Or, <laughs> or Donald Trump? <laughs> We're talking about Donald Trump, but I wish we could detox from it all. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, some people will trust DT with their life. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some devout fans out there, yeah. Uh, this lady might be one of them. I was shocked because I was like, oh, yeah, no, people, well, I think they would kill for him. But would they kill themselves for Donald Trump? Yes. Mm-hmm. If Donald Trump does not win, what do you do? I, I hope that I'm going to die. <laughs> you want to die if Donald Trump doesn't yeah, win? I, do. I don't want to live like this anymore. You like our country the way it is now? doesn't really matter what I think, but you've got a pretty good life. You got, you got nice clothes on. You got hat on, sunglasses. You got your health. I mean, the country's done pretty well by you, right? No, the country hasn't done anything by me. I, I've done everything for myself. My yeah. husband and I took care of ourselves. As- this is the entitlement of people. You know, I'd rather die. This is all while headline stories only reek of war and terror around the globe. You think that if Donald Trump doesn't win, you're going to kill yourself? Yeah, wow. Uh, first it. of all, that's probably the only thing that woman and I would agree upon. Like, yeah, go ahead, kill yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? yeah. you won't I mean, be missed. And that assertion, by the way, like this country didn't do anything for me. I was self-made and did blah, blah, blah. This is like when Obama said years ago, like, that. you know, you started a small business, you grew that up, you did not do that by yourself. And everyone got so pissed off at him on the right anyways, like, how dare you say that? His point was that he clarified in that same speech that they never played, obviously. If you own a, a pizza place, like... You need roads to get to it. You need electricity to run it. You need gas. You need utilities. You infrastructure. Need, yes, you need the infrastructure that this country is providing for you. You need a stable economy so people can come buy your product. Like, no, you don't do it by yourself. That is just not true. Everyone that you know you think is crossing the border and some that are illegally right now, you think they're running here because we have the American dream. But now you don't realize that you have reaped the benefit of that American dream yourself for all these years? You think there's a sliver of this opportunity elsewhere? For sure. And yeah, the uh, the Mexicans running over the border, the ones helping to pick the food that you're either eating at home or serving in your restaurant. Or I mean, it's we're a whole big uh, ecosystem here, and we really can't do it without the entire system. Yeah. Uh, I just think the entitlement is uh, just crazy, but at the same time, you know, like, oh, I'll kill myself if he doesn't win. I can't imagine. Uh, like, oh, boy, if Pearl Jam doesn't put out a new album, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> like, Yeah. Yeah, that was, she was a fan, fan. Yeah. but there's being crazy too. So. She was absolute, dude. 
Yeah. Uh, you like this? You like how this country is going right now? Like, yeah. I mean, not everything, but I'm not going to kill myself, dude. I can't wait to see mass suicides in this country come next November. So. Uh, well, uh, to wrap this up with a tiny bow, I'll give you the latest uh, clip from Donald Trump Jr. As he talks about uh, the new Speaker of the House being a MAGA mic. Are you ready for it? This is unedited and exactly how he said it. His nickname's MAGA Mike and whatever it is, I'm like, it's almost like... It's like, I don't know, is this, this, this first one, I think this, I don't know, but is, is, this is not better than I was told we would, I was told we were getting MAGA. And again, this isn't MAGA. Dude, that it's, is, wow. That is unedited. I is there a seizure you. right there? <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, seriously. He's talking to the Hobbit foot. They're, uh, you know, he's interviewing uh, MTG about her book, her new book. Yeah. Okay. yeah. They're going back and forth, dude. And wow. it is. I mean, it's comedy show. It is a complete comedy show between the two of them. But there are moments throughout the whole. He's supposedly interviewing her. He just can't speak. Do you think he did at least the whole eight ball before the interview, or was right. it just only half? And he's gonna do the other half after. Yes, exactly. dude, it's nuts. How I mean, he's Woo-hoo. really that is his nickname's Maga Mike, and whatever it is, I'm like, it's almost like. It's uh, like, I don't know. Is this, uh, this this first one? I think this, I don't know. But is, 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 this is not better than I was told we would. I, I was told we were getting MAGA. And again, this isn't MAGA. That is crazy, bro. Woo. Tyrannically wiping his nostrils as he does this. <laughs> like, I, th- I was told we got a MAGA mic. It's not MAGA. Right. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. <laughs> Hey, dude, if you think, if you listen to just the last two weeks of uh, Trump audio, this family is going down quickly. You can do it, baby. I love you so much. (laughs) And it's bad news. Bad things are happening. Uh, Raping you from behind. (laughs) That is the Trump family over the last two weeks. Someone should check Mar-a-Lago for radon or something. Because there's, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, wow. Wow. It is something, dude. Uh, away we go. This is Need to Know News. News you need to know. Start the news chant, please. Come on. News, 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 news. Steve Harness. Oh, that's my name. Uh, okay, I can sort of tie this all in still, uh, at least to our previous story about, you know, professional fighting and boxing and, uh. Nice. You know, sometimes you have childhood heroes. A classic duo. If I found out Batman and Robin hated each other right now, I, I would, I would feel broken inside. Uh, mm-hmm. Ben and Jerry, if they, if I found out they, these two hate each other, like it destroys my perception of reality. Yeah, so, I get that. I shed a single tear this week when I found out that Hall and Oates hate each other. Did you know that Hall and Oates are suing each other? That Hall got a restraining order against Oates? Listen, yeah. I, uh, I read about this, uh, <laughs> yeah. and I am in the know that they've always had issues. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. listen, Daryl Hall has a huge ego i mean is that a secret to anyone he it's a huge ego. he was the the paul simon of that group the simon and guard he was the 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 powerhouse of that duo right he and and sarah wrote most of the the really big hits of that duo's career and he won't let you forget it either i mean he'll t- he'll correct remind and tell you all about it but to be su- that's like me suing you dude or right. you suing me i mean that's crazy what has happened to poor all the notes that this is where they're at one of the most successful duos in rock history it says uh 70s and 80s hits from rich girl kisses on the list private eyes man eater i can't go for that out of touch i mean these you know these guys were icons and yeah, not doing very well anymore. A uh, restraining order was granted against uh, Oates. <laughs> so, well, you know why, don't you? Uh, what's the whole story? Was one trying to man eat the other? Or what? <laughs> no. So they have a corporation that owns all their songs. Yeah, and they're equal partners. And John Oates wants to sell his to this capital management company of some sort and which a lot of musicians do that because they'll get small residuals every year or they can sell their catalog for one big chunk of money so when they get older some of them start to want to do that yeah and daryl hall doesn't want to be partners so how does that escalate to a restraining order because he's trying to stop him from from completing the sale 
Uh, Steve, sometimes people use restraining orders in a way that is not legally how they're supposed to be used, but it's to pause you from doing other things. Like, oh, it's just not banging on Hall's window in the middle of the night or something? No. No, <laughs> dude, no. He's not stalking him. He's not even following him. He hasn't <laughs> said anything. Or sounds like it. He hasn't no, even that's... called him. Okay. Why would a judge grant a restraining order then? I thought those things were hard to get. Listen, <laughs> this is, is the truth, dude, is that they're supposed to be tough to get. <laughs> but you can use them in all different ways. They're like tax codes. Right, Bruski? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I'm not talking from personal experience or anything like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, that, that's it's not always that you're stalking somebody or anything like that. It's just meant to stop you from doing a particular action. Mm, I see. You know, you did, and I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You masturbate outside a woman's window one time, and next thing you know, you got the court on your ass. I just, right. it's, it's unfair. I thought this was America. I thought we had freedoms here. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, exactly. You know what? This is a country I no longer wish to be in. I would like to die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If Hall and Oates can't get along, then screw this. I'm killing myself. <laughs> okay. No. Do you know, uh, I think I am the, uh, I, I, I think I'm part of the uh, Hall and Oates fan club. Do you know that? <laughs> no, I did not I saw know them, that. I saw them last year. Do you still have to mail a postcard to join that club? I mean, how does that work nowadays? Well, uh, here, I will put on speaker, and I'll uh, call the uh, front office, okay? Okay. Let's see if we can hear what they say. Call That's and out your emergency hall and out helpline. To hear one-on-one, please press one. <laughs> to hear it go, please press two. Oh, we'll hear that. To hear Manny. <laughs> This is a Hall and Oates <laughs> emergency <laughs> line where if you just ever need a fix, dude, you wow. can call this number from anywhere and there's a catalog of their music that you could just listen, get a little wow. fix in. Only from rotary phones hanging on your kitchen wall. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is Hall hilarious. I'm glad they provide that service for us all. Who needs 811 or whatever for suicide? <laughs> like, yeah. Got the Hall and Oates thing. Anytime well, you're feeling down, dude, Hall and Oates emergency. Just say, say it isn't so, okay? Just say it isn't so. It's, no. Well, it is so. We'll see how this yeah. all gets resolved. But, uh, yeah. And still one of my favorite old dumb producer stories. We had a producer named Mensa who was a very smart kid, and that's why we called him Mensa. But he thought that the that that Hall and Oates, the band, he thought that the name of the band was Hauling Oats. Like, oh, like uh, someone you were had a, loading a trailer up, like yeah, I was gonna haul them down the road. A bushel of weed over your shoulder, you're hauling <laughs> oats down the side of the road. Oh gosh, that's one of those moments where you're just like, dude, you are an idiot. That you is so that's stupid. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Not hauling oats, so oh. <laughs> all and oats, bastard. Where were you in the eighties? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, you know, uh, on that there, I was listening to msnbc in my car the other night and uh one of the guests made uh, a reference to uh marty mcfly and um george mcfly and biff tannen yeah. and one of the other guests who was a a reporter from the guardian named hugo lowell he had no idea who the heck any of those people were oh wow so that's sacrilege dude I can't tell you how often I make references, and I either will say Google that one, kids, or if you don't get the you reference, sound, it, it does make you sound young when you say that. Put that well, one in your Google machine. <laughs> that's part of the joke too, is to sure. tell the kids go Google that one, kids. Uh, uh, but yeah, the uh, the the other one is we can't be friends if you don't understand that reference. So you know. right, yes, no. Some of these are important, dude. The fact that you don't know them scares me. Yes. I often call myself the friendly neighborhood DJ here in Tahoe on the station. I'm like, yeah, it's Steve, yeah, your friendly neighborhood DJ. And if you don't understand that's a Spider-Man reference, then we cannot be friends. No, no, no. no. Right. So, <laughs> keep on clicking. Dude, you must go. Uh, some no of those, for you. Uh, some of these things have to transcend age and time. I mean, uh, back to the future, Marty McFly. You don't know who Marty McFly is? That's what we're here for, is to impart this pop culture knowledge on the yes, people. Yes. And encourage them to watch some of these old movies, as I've been doing with my children. So, you know. Oh, dude, before we go, before we sneak away, little Crosby is just kicking back, becoming a man very quickly, <laughs> and all of a sudden listening to rock and roll and asks for a suggestion the other day. Yes. What did he ask for? 
It was so funny. He sends me a text. Just he, he was at his mom's house. And just like 9 o'clock at night, I get a text. He's like, hey, Dad, what was that one Metallica song with the famous drum beat in the middle? And I was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. One is the answer. <laughs> so, and I sent him a link to it on Spotify. I'm like, here you go, boy. What a good kid I have. Asking me about Metallica songs and late nights. <laughs> so funny, dude. He's just at home dreaming about Metallica. Yeah, listen, it's hard to tell as a parent if you're doing a good job or not, but sometimes there's moments like that where you're like, yeah, I'm doing something right, damn it. <laughs> right. Mm. I mean, the kid's teeth are falling out of his head. I, I, who, he doesn't need a dentist, but as long as he knows Metallica. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be all good, dude. Right. Yep. Nope, he's been doing good with his uh, 80s movies and uh, getting into uh, some good rock and roll and all that stuff. So. Well, get that boy healthy, dude, so we can get him on the air to quiz us. Indeed. All right, gentlemen, I think that's going to do it for the uh, program today as we wrap up another episode of The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve Olabruski. Indeed. Find us online, thevocalminority.net. Find all the socials, especially the fun ones. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, the Twitter X thing, and uh, YouTube, of course. So. Bruski. Sayonara. And we say bye-bye. Test one, two. Test one, two. Stop. I